Yay Networks. You know, a lot of people are scared to keep it real once that microphone cuts on. Not me. My name is D1. I'd like to welcome you to the Mission Vision Podcast with D1. We're going to be talking about everything. Oh, I'm talking about God, purpose, spirituality, keeping it real. You know what I mean? Love, relationships. I'm talking about personal finance, getting your money right, keeping your money right, growing and multiplying it, keeping it really, really, really real, and much more, y'all. All from your boy D1. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on with y'all? It's your boy, D1. I'd like to welcome you to the Mission Vision Podcast with D1. Thank you for tuning in. Just know that I love you, all right? Today's episode is all about mental health. Y'all, um, we're going to break this episode down into three segments, three sections. We're going to talk about my mental health journey. We're going to talk about my encounters with people who have mental health issues. And we're going to talk about a young queen who took her life and committed suicide uh, recently. Um named Arlana Miller, and that happened at Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is the same city where I attended college. So uh, mental health awareness, y'all, let's jump in. Um, this is May. This is a uh, mental health uh, awareness month, you know, and that's not something that I pre-planned out. Um, I wanted to talk about this because uh, um, my encounters with people who have mental health issues are far more than what you might realize. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I've been through, especially as a public figure, as being D1, that um, uh, I've dealt with people who have mental health issues, and I've had some very awkward encounters, some very uh, potentially dangerous encounters with people. And I'm not mad at those people. I'm not here to attack them. I'm definitely not here to make fun of them. Um, but I know that it was uh, mental health issues that were at the forefront of... Um, of making them say what they've said or act how they've acted. Um, I've had physical threats made against me uh, in the past, um, both online and uh, mostly online, mostly online, a lot online. Um, and, you know, sometimes have face-to-face encounters with these people and then, you know, come to find out when the whole story comes out, like one one person in particular who I'm thinking about, um, this person, and I'm going to try to be as you know, vague as possible because I'm not trying to implicate anybody or point a finger at anybody because these are real scenarios. Um, I ran into this person's father uh, on some on some random stuff. I ran into this person's father in a very public place, and this was after uh, this was after things got like real serious and really real um, in terms of the threats that were being made uh, against me and against some of my family members. And this person's father um, came up and thanked me for not. Uh, for not acting out, you know, in violence and for not uh, taking it to the level that I could have taken it to um, because of the threats that were being made against me. This person's father thanked me um, um, and they apologized on behalf of, you know, uh, their family member who was just doing the most, y'all, like the absolute most um, and endangering uh, not only myself, but some people who mean a lot to me, you know, some of my family members. Um and I realized it was mental health issues, you know, it was mental health issues. And it's just like, golly, this is still a functional human being, you know. Uh, it's not like they have to walk around with uh, a supervisor around them every day or walk around, you know, just with, uh, yeah, with, with chains and with handcuffs on. Like, no, they're, they're living, breathing and coexisting amongst us. But I know that they have mental health issues. Um, that let me know that it, you know, that it's real in the field out here. Uh, uh, there was... Another situation that I can think of to where, and, and you know what, this has happened more than once, um, encountering people with mental health issues. As a public figure, um, I'm so thankful for all the people who consider themselves fans and supporters of mine. And oftentimes, uh, people, some people go above and beyond to show that they are like a supporter or a fan. And most times, the people who go above and beyond um, it it really just comes from a genuine place to where they're like, all right, we're gonna keep it real on this podcast. Um, it comes from a genuine place with uh some people because they're just like, bro, the way you use your gift, it really uh impacts me. It impacts me, my family, it's changed my life. I've had people uh send big monetary gifts saying, like, yo, uh, you the reason why my marriage is still together. Um, you the reason why I didn't um you know, uh, drop out of school or I didn't uh, commit suicide and people have wanted to, you know, bless me and sow into what I do um, in that type of manner. Um, 
there's people who are just like, I'm always going to support because what you're doing, who you are as a person, your heart, it resonates with me. So some people go above and beyond to show their support. And I appreciate it. Oh, man, I appreciate them so much. Uh, that's one of the best parts of what I do. But some people, they go above and beyond uh, showing support. And the support that they show... Um, you know, oftentimes it ends really bad because uh, they're going above and beyond showing support and it's because they have a motive or they have an agenda tied into it. They have a desired outcome. Um, uh, oftentimes with uh, women, the desired outcome is for me to marry them um, just straight up, you know, and that we could do a whole episode on that because um, that's happened a lot of times. Um, and I think when the reality hits them that that's not going to happen, um, you know, or when they feel like that's not going to happen. Uh, the people who have mental health issues, I've seen it turn into something to where I'm public enemy number one in their eyes at that point. Literally the same me who this person just came and was supporting and showering with love and attention or, or, or gifts or things of that nature or just support. Um, it, it gets real bad real quick and gets real ugly, you know, and I haven't done anything except just continue to be myself. And at the core of it, I know that it's mental health issues um, that are undealt with inside of people. Um, this has happened multiple times, you know, multiple times. Um, and usually the fallout is real bad, you know, to where um, these people, uh, yeah, they just, they, 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 they start to uh, hate me in a lot of ways. It comes across as if they start to hate me and they either don't even have direct access to me to tell me this um, but you know, people use social media and they'll try to go on my social media and, and maybe say something or they'll try to use whatever line of communication that they feel like they have, uh, to me to express this, um, mental health issues, you know what I mean? Uh, with dudes, a lot of times the mental health issues, um, uh, seem to arise or manifest from people who, um, who are fans at first, but then who want something like they want me to, um, put them on and make a career for them. They want me to make them a successful rapper. Um, they want me to sign them to Mission Vision Music, my label. Um, uh, they, If they want something and they have an unmet expectation, uh, I've seen some, uh, some brothers who have mental health issues uh, take that to the fullest extent of, of being, you know, angry with me and, and just having this, uh, this grudge against me. Um, to the point where, yeah, it's been arguments. It's been, you know, it's been, it, it's, man. Um, yeah, y'all, it, it's, it's some people who have mental health issues who I've had to deal with. Um, how can I say this? Dealing with people with mental health issues to where, like, they're functional, you know, and and we're actually real close. And it's like, wait, we friends, you know, like you got real, real access to me. And when it comes out that you have, you know, mental health issues that are undealt with, this stuff has uh has led to just some very, very, very um unfortunate, you know, incidents having to occur. And when it occurs between friends, uh, it leads to usually friends getting into it, friends um falling out, um my encounters with people who have mental health issues uh, are have been plenty, unfortunately, and I'm praying for everyone that they get help. Uh, now I'm putting the ball in your court because if you know someone who has mental health issues, it's actually your responsibility and mine as well to do what we can if we have proximity to them and if we have uh, enough of a relationship with them to help them get help, to uh, suggest to them to get help, to um to introduce them to the help. Uh, and that is, that is the unspoken cure or solution to a lot of what goes on in this world with, uh, with mental health. A lot of people can't self-diagnose themselves, but they have people around them who observe and who understand that, uh, their loved one or their coworker or somebody they know is going through something. And we just have to not be, uh, casual observers because somebody's life is going to be impacted by this. Not only the person with the mental health issues, but the people who they encounter on a daily basis. Um, I want to challenge everyone to do that. Uh, it's not a bad thing at all to 
help someone, um, you know, get rid of this, uh, get rid of this, uh, this big, this big obstacle that's in their way of helping them live their best life. So uh, there's different ways we can do that. And um, in segment number two, we're going to talk about my me- mental health journey. Segment number two, we're talking about my mental health journey because it hasn't been uh, without blemishes. It hasn't been without um, without some uh, some ups and downs. So I see y'all in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to announce who the sponsor is for today's episode. This is a company that I personally use. D1, I use BetterHelp.com. What it is, is it's online therapy. These are licensed professional therapists, you heard me, who can help you out with things that you're dealing with, such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, trauma from the past, um, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, y'all. BetterHelp.com has definitely been helping me in my life, and I'm proud that they are sponsor of uh, this week's episode of the Mission Vision Podcast. I want you to start living happier today, all right? So as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash MV. Join over 1 million people, myself included, who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MV. Yo, yo, what's up, my people? Hey, we back. It's your boy, D1, the Mission Vision Podcast with D1. This is segment number two. We're talking about mental health awareness. This is all about my mental health journey right now, y'all. Um, I can tell y'all that uh, I was blessed for uh, a large um, segment of my early life, um, my early years, to where I never dealt with any mental health issues, uh, not anything that I was aware of, not anything that was having an impact on me, um, not anything significant, you know, like... We hear the terms depression um, uh, used a lot now, especially in this generation, like teenagers, like so many teenagers are just depressed. Like that's the norm, unfortunately. Anxiety. uh, These are things I never dealt with growing up. Um, As far as, you know, having uh, low self-esteem at times or confidence issues. uh, Yeah, that's stuff that uh, I I dealt with, you know, growing up to a certain extent. But honestly, I was a really, uh, I was a really, um, I was a really comfortable, authentic person, you know, um, really authentic in my own skin, um, for the most part. So, uh, my mental health journey really took a turn when I got into the music industry professionally, because now all of a sudden you're having to compete every day for relevance and for people's attention and for even, uh, your own people to believe in you and to continue to, uh, to want to, you know, pour into you and 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 invest into you you know um as y'all are moving forward together whether whether that's record label employees whether that's your own team you know you're dealing with so many things you're dealing with people's feelings people's egos um and my mental health journey uh took a turn for the worse um in like 2014 uh uh, for the first time in my life, I dealt with uh, I dealt with real deal depression. Um, the depression stemmed from me uh, being a signed artist, signed to a major record label. And uh, I've told this story before. Some of y'all know it. Uh, some of y'all might not know it. But uh, me starting to get bigger platforms than I ever had before in my life. Um, literally being, you know, excited because a lot of the dreams that I had were starting to come true. And it's like, yo, I'm on BET. Yo, I'm on tour, going all around the country. Yo, I'm signed. Yo, like, I'm I'm in rooms with people who I only dream to be in rooms with, right? And what happened was I started to get away from the core of uh, of who I was. So even if the public didn't know it, I was always trying to micromanage how to be everything to everybody, how to appeal to everybody all at once, you know? And I'm in rooms with... Uh, amazing pastors to, you know, uh, media personalities to uh, well-known artists, some on the mainstream side, some in the faith-based community, to community leaders, to educators, to students, to uh, record label uh, executives, um, to powerful managers and all this stuff. And I was trying to be everything to everybody. And um, 
what it led to was, you know, me having an identity crisis and not really knowing, um, not really knowing who I was anymore. And that was a tough, that was a tough time for me to to not really know who I was anymore. Um, uh, I started to have opportunities and platforms. I remember I was on the BT Hip Hop Awards on the Cipher. Uh, a lot of people say, "D, you killed that verse, man. You did your thing, bro. I still remember you all these years from that." Um, and in my mind, I'm just like, man. Nah, I, I know I didn't do my best on something uh, with a platform like that because um, in my mind, I was too worried about how to uh, appeal to everybody instead of being uh, focused on uh, why God gave me this platform and how to make God proud and glorify God with this platform. Um, that stuff tore me up. You know, that stuff messed me up. Uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself at that time in life, 2014, 2015, um, being signed, I put a lot of pressure on myself to win over my own record label, to win them over to where they truly believed in me, you know, to where uh, I'm thinking we're about to be this team, and that's why I signed with y'all. Um, and then I'm realizing, dang, like, it's taking so much work for me to have to get y'all to genuinely um, believe in me and feel um, feel motivated to want to help push my, uh, my content and, and push my music. Um, that it just became extremely stressful. Um, and it and it and it made me question myself to be, oh oh, to be a signed artist and to be successful already, and to be told by your own team, your own record label, over and over that this music you just played for them, this music you just turned in, this ain't good enough. Uh, they're not gonna put this out. This is corny. Uh, this is weird. Um, nobody don't wanna hear this. That type of stuff. Man, it's either going to make you beat somebody up, you heard me, and, and catch a charge, or it's going to make you really uh, look in the mirror and question your reflection and question if you're really dope or not. And I ain't catch no charge, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm not like that, y'all. Um, but uh, I definitely was looking in the mirror, questioning myself, my skills, uh, my confidence was shot for a while because of the opinions of uh, of some people that was supposed to be on my on my team, you know, who really... Uh, didn't even know music or care about music or were passionate about that. You know, they just held a corporate job that happened to be at a record label. But um, that being said, uh, my mental health journey led to, uh, during this time, me um, definitely dealing with depression, not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Um, legit, just always finding excuses to not do some work, you know, to run away from it. But it's like you got a full plate, but... Um, but finding ways to duck and dodge, you know, having to do stuff because my motivation was just on zero. Um, me kind of isolating myself and not wanting to really, um, not feeling like I deserved to have fun or to receive love from people, you know. Um, me having some unhealthy relationships in my life at the time that uh, it's like I leaned into the unhealthy relationships and I leaned away from um, the healthy relationships uh, my mental health journey also consisted of, uh, when it came to isolating myself, um, me having friends, having real good friends, uh, who I could reach out to, but wanting to pretend like I had it all together and almost like, I don't want to bother them. You know, I'm the strong one. I'm the friend that they, that they come to that they say like, man, that boy D doing his thing, D handling his business. You heard me? Um, and me not wanting to go to them and admit that I needed help and I was struggling. Um, uh, my mental health journey uh, consisted of uh, me having suicidal thoughts and, and actually contemplating suicide at one time. Uh, this was in uh, this was in twenty, yeah, late twenty fourteen. Um, I remember late twenty fourteen. Uh, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, and I uh, dang, that's crazy. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, late 2014, I was in Nashville, Tennessee. I was on tour. I was on the BET Black College tour, and uh, I was contemplating suicide right before the uh, the show at uh, TSU at Tennessee State University. And I had it all. That's crazy. I had it all planned out. Um, I legit was sitting here driving, thinking about it, and um. And I knew deep down that I didn't want to do that. I knew I didn't want to take my, my own life. So, uh, you know, I started, I started like, seeing tears well up in my eyes. 
None of the tears even fell, but just my eyes were super watery with these tears. And as I had this suicide plan, um, you know, I, I stepped back and the whole ride to Nashville, from Atlanta to Nashville, so however many hours, like four hours, um, I had to mentally make that decision of if I was going to go through with it or not. And I'm still here. So I ended up not uh, killing myself, thankfully. But I thought about it. So when people have uh, suicidal thoughts, which we're going to get into in the third segment, um, unfortunately, this is something that people, uh, a lot of people can't relate to. And a lot of people don't know how many of us have been like this close before in life to ending our own lives. And, um, and I don't ever want to see a person who has been given life by God um, decide to take it away and falsely think that it's a permanent fix to, you know, something that was a temporary issue. Because uh, guess what? I was going through depression, but uh, I got through depression. You feel me? Um, and I'm aware enough to know that uh, um, I've been, I couldn't relate to people who had ever dealt with depression prior to me going through it. And now that I can uh, relate to them, uh, I take it that much more serious when someone says that they're struggling or they might have symptoms of depression. So I totally get it. And that's why I, um, that's why I want people to be mentally, you know, mentally strong, not just going to the gym to be physically strong, you know, not just reading the Bible and memorizing scriptures to be spiritually strong, but I want people to be mentally strong. So understanding what we're pouring into our brains and what we're allowing ourselves to be surrounded by in terms of the, uh, the spirits, the energy, and the content that we are allowing into these amazingly powerful yet fragile uh, brains of ours, um, that's something I really care about. So I'm really intentional about what I pour into you you heard me? And into your brain, uh, I have to be intentional about what I pour into my own brain. And um, that's why we in this journey together. Uh, I see y'all after the break. Uh, segment number three is up next. All right, y'all, we back. It's your boy D1. This is the Mission Vision Podcast with D1. Uh, thank you to everyone out there who's been tuning in. Um, make sure you go back and check out any other episodes if you haven't caught uh, the whole season thus far. Uh this segment is dedicated to a young queen who took her life um, recently. Her name is Arlana Miller. She was a freshman at Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, same city where I went to college at. Um, and she was a cheerleader. Uh, she was from Dallas, Texas. And uh, she wrote a suicide note uh, on Instagram, uh, left it as a long caption, and... Um, and took her life uh, at the time of this recording. Uh, this happened recently. Um, she 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 took her life, and I gotta read this, y'all. Um, I gotta read this to y'all, just because. I mean, if you've heard it, then it's not news to you. But um, man, it's a young lady, yo, and this is one young lady. But imagine how many uh, young people or older people there are who feel these same type of ways. And this is, uh, I, I pray that her soul rests in peace. Um, uh, I pray for her family and her friends that, uh, that they grow closer to Christ uh, through this time and that they receive the peace that can only come from Jesus Christ um, because I know that this type of pain is is very tough to, um, to stomach just with human rationale. Um, so this episode is about mental health awareness. So I want to read this uh, this letter that she wrote and uh, this is a teachable moment for uh, for all of us. So uh, let's learn something. Um, she said, may this day bring me rest and peace. I have fought this urge since my early teenage years. I gave this life all the fight I had. To everyone who has entered my life, I'm so grateful. And I can only imagine how this may find you. I have been surrounded by people who may have honestly thought that I was okay but I haven't been okay for a while. I struggled so much through just this year alone, from COVID to tearing my ACL to nearly failing all of my classes. To the people in my life, I pray you learn to vocalize your feelings and get help always. I failed at that and I'm afraid it's too late. Mom, thank you so much. I pray you know I'm at rest now. You would have given anything to see me happy 
You have given everything to see me happy. I'm happy in the water where everything is still and peaceful. I have written so many suicide notes in my life, but finally I've reached my end. I hope this teaches everyone to check on your strong friends. Be present always. I'm contradicting myself, but never give up. I know that I'm letting a lot of people down by what I'm about to do. But truth is, I've already let down so many people throughout my life, and it just feels unbearable. I've lost my connection to God. The devil seems to have won. And that is okay. I blame no one for this. I thank everyone for all they've done. And I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. But thinking about how everyone else would feel about my death is not enough either. I've tried to please and make everyone else happy my entire life. I've been dead inside for too long. To everyone I love, don't find guilt in my situation. To my granddad, I wish you were here to tell me I'm being stupid, to tell me it's not worth it, but you've left me and found your own peace. I've always been stubborn and prideful, just like you. I always dreamed of becoming so many things that I am today, but they just aren't enough. I'm not enough. I haven't felt enough for a while, but I say all this to say, I'm done fighting. My battle is over, and I pray everyone finds peace in that. I don't ever want to see that happen um, to a person that's out there right now that's feeling like they're dead on the inside or that's acknowledging that um, life is truly a spiritual war. That young lady knew that. Um, but she said she felt like the devil won as it pertains to her life. Um, the devil is never meant to get the final victory. Never, never. Um, so the best thing we can do is learn from this. The best thing we can do is allow this to make us uncomfortable and to inspire us to want to help someone else. Someone who seems like they're our strong friend or to make us want to help ourselves. Um, if we know that we're not all the way right, if any of those words really um, jumped off the page to you as I spoke them, um, and if it felt like it really hit close to home because it applies to you, then um, I want you to take your mental health seriously. Um, you know, don't be afraid to seek out uh, therapy, um, professional therapy. Don't be afraid to um, tap into your friends and your loved ones who you know are going to have uh, an open ear and be there for you. Um, uh, don't box God out of your life. Uh, go to God, pray, um, read God's word. Um, you know, allow God's spirit to, to, to permeate, you know, your day to day life, um, to where you could truly feel God, um, around you and not just know that God exists. Uh, yeah, for that young lady right there, Alana Miller, she seemed, extremely articulate she seemed uh extremely aware of the battle that was taking place inside of her and in front of her and it just seemed like she got tired of fighting she got tired of fighting um no one should have to feel like they're fighting by themselves because we all get tired of fighting sometimes i know i get tired of fighting sometimes um but I also know that I'm not alone. And that's what I want to leave y'all with today. Uh, you are also not alone. And don't make anyone in your life um, ever feel like they're alone. Uh, there's one human race, and we're all in this thing together. Uh, there's so many dividing lines that the world tries to draw um, based on the color of your skin, based on uh, your social status, based on... Um, your economic status, um, based on your geographic location. But at the end of the day, we're all one human race. So uh, I love y'all, and I hope that you have uh, a blessed week. Um, this is all about self-improvement. Uh, the Mission Vision podcast uh, is meant to just help you 
be the best version of yourself that you can be and to grow a closer relationship with God as well. So um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in and make sure y'all tune in next time. Um, It's your boy D1. Be real, be righteous, and be relevant, baby. Three is up. See y'all next time. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you share this. And uh, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, uh, let's keep them numbers growing and let's keep the impact flowing, all right? Peace. All right, now, that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, I got some more heat for y'all. This your boy, D1, with the Mission Vision Podcast. Remember, Mission Vision is a lifestyle, so keep those threes up everywhere you go and be real, be righteous, and be relevant. Make sure that you subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, whatever you got to do on Spotify, whatever, like, comment, share this thing everywhere. And most of all, tell somebody about it and tune in and you just be blessed. I'll see you real soon. Peace.